important to me is important to you. And so the Lord says, what's important to you now is more important to him. And he says, I've called you out by me. You are a remnant. And because you have shown up, I am going to allow you to begin to experience an open port. Welcome everybody out tonight to Kingdom Builders Training Center, um, Tabernacle on Fire, Kingdom Builders Bible College, all of the above. Um, we are just excited. Uh, I'm Carlos Bounds and this is my husband, War Bounds. We're apostles here and um, it is awesome just to see you here tonight. Um, we love the Lord, we love the worship, and um, we could be worshiping just right now on and on because His presence is always just beautiful. Amen. Amen. And it's just awesome to see you here tonight because God has that remnant that He is bringing forth and that's being aligned with His calendar. Um, when we began, I wasn't raised in church, and when we started, it was amazing that we also started right after um, getting saved, started celebrating a feast, and our first feast was um, Hanukkah. And so many people thought we were Jews or whatever, and they start asking questions, are y'all Jewish? We said, no, you know, we just, Christians, just children of God, and um, but the Lord showed us that what we were doing, we were celebrating His feast. Yeah. It's not a Jewish feast, amen. amen. But also, we were aligning with something that, you know, the song said, His love would chase you down. His love chased us down where we just loved him and he was loving on us and we were following him and here we are today. But the beautiful part of it is when we began to celebrate him, celebrate his feast times, it took the strive out of being in the world. It took all of what we know as religion, all of that. Yeah, y'all could do better than that, come on. It took it out and we began to learn about kingdom. 
And when we learned about kingdom, when we learned about kingdom, it really began to show us who we were, but not only that, not only who we were, but we, we, we learned about the feast and we learned about what God was doing and all of a sudden, you know, we didn't have many roaches no more. In other words, we began to operate kingdom principles and begin to worship, celebrate his feast, and our warfare was different because we had lined up with his calendar. And so each month we began to find out what he was doing, and when we found out what he was doing, it also gave us a prophetic insight of what the enemy was doing. And that kept us ahead of the game. But not only that, it pushed us ahead of the world. And so our family was dirt cold. Cold, cold. Cold. Cold, cold. Well, mine was so cold, we had to wash paper clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all probably saw. We washed paper plates, too. They wash them paper plates. Anyway. So what we found out as we began to celebrate who he was, all of a sudden we began to prosper. Raise your hand. Say, Lord, Lord thank, you thank you for the ease, for the ease that's, coming in my life. that's coming in my life. Every demon, every demon, every enemy, every enemy, every enemy, from mama and them, grandpa and them, and all of them, is off of me, is cut off in the name of Jesus. Today is the day. I'm a kingdom citizen, and I'm getting fruit from the kingdom. Amen? We are speaking people. The kingdom is voice activated. And as we began to move forward, things began to shift in our direction. The word of God was made flesh. I'm talking about it's not religious. And so, as we celebrated the feast, it wasn't legalistic. Because we started getting blessed just because our heart was in it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor you bless because you your heart is in it. Because <laughs> our heart was turned toward God. And we was like, well, shucks, we celebrate 4th of July and Memorial Day and Labor Day. You mean tell me God got some days that he wants to be celebrated? And so when we switched off the world and we switched on God, something happened. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, you will never be the same. You will never be the same. Because today is the day, today, is the day of y'all's increase. increase. Watch God. Watch God. The striving, the striving, the striving of trying, of trying to make a living and have some money, money is over. It's easy. 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 So we tapped in, and as we tapped in, we realized that now God wants us to teach his people. And that's all we do, is teach people kingdom principles. And those principles are also his feast times, his holy days. And with that, we see nothing but testimonies over and over and over and over again where people are being set free. Amen. Amen. So you all are here tonight, not by accident. Hallelujah. So I want you to sit back, relax, as we get ready to get started. And we have... We have Pastor 
burnt seed. Amen. <laughs> and we have a rabbi, brown, awesome teacher. And Amen. whenever we send anything out, he teaches God's calendar, his peace time. And um, he's going to be teaching again on Shemitah year. Oh, y'all. Hopefully he'll hit on that tonight. Amen. Amen. We've been in two of them. We're excited about the third one. And we're touching on that tonight. It, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Look at your name and say, he doesn't change. And because we were a part of two, and what he done in two, we are really ready for this one. Amen. 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 And then we have Apostle um, Jackie, and then my awesome husband, Apostle Roy. Amen. And we have Dr. Bobby. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's give yourselves a hand for being here. Everybody should have um, the Harvard dog. It's, ours is a little bit longer. Yours is shorter on your on your um, on your table. Do you have it? And she's passing out. Uh, I know we're celebrating Passover, but today is also the Sabbath. So I say Shabbat Shalom to you. So you have Passover, a Sabbath, and you're going to have a blood moon. And I'll just stop right there. That's our three. That's not by accident that you're here. Uh, in studying that in Hebrew, there is no word for coincidence. So if you're here, that means God has hand-selected you to be a part of what he did. So you are the remnant. I heard that. And I also, uh, as I was looking around, uh, I just heard there are many gifts in the house to be dispatched. You will get orders from headquarters. There are so many gifts that are needed and necessary for the body of Christ to do kingdom work. Many of your gifts have been here. For such a time as this, 
He had to keep you hidden. Just as he hid Moses. Just as he hid Abraham. He had to hide you until he matured you. So look out. This is your coming out part. God's going to speak to you. And I'm saying, as part of the body of Christ in the kingdom, we need your gift. Don't sit on your gift. The body of Christ needs your gift. Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay, so if you have your paper in front of you. We are gathered this evening to observe and remember Passover. God delivers of his people. This is the time that God delivered of his people. God delivered Israel from bondage of slavery, and he commanded us to observe his holiday. What do you want us to do? Who oh, holiday is it? We are not to celebrate in vain, but to give thanks to him and to recognize an even greater Passover and deliverance. The Lord said even greater Passover and deliverance. Yes. Passover is one of the Lord's feasts. Yes. It's not a Jewish celebration. Let me get it straight. It's not a Jewish celebration. But one of God's holy days, the God holy days. And I'm expecting a miracle. And I'm expecting a miracle. Now. Now. So let's say now miracle. Now miracle. Hmm. The days we celebrate, these are the Lord's holiest days. Through the death of the photo Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, we too will be passed over from death and released from bondage of sin. He said we're going to be released from what? Say it again. We're going to be released from it. I ask tonight that you consider each of the scriptures and prayers that we will be reading this evening. That you may truly observe and recognize our God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I also encourage you to seek God on your own. Let me say it again. To seek God on your own. So whatever that you ask in and believe in God for, decrease so God can increase inside of you. The truth is revealed in God's word. If you can turn with me, let us read Exodus 12, verse 17. Exodus 12, verse 17. You have it? Amen. Read it with me. Let us read. So the Lord says, celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. Because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Amen. Turn to, I got caught up reading the scripture. Too. Turn to Luke 22 and 19. I know we have a thing to turn in your Bibles. It's in your Bibles, but it's also on your um, handout. handout. And I'll read. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do 
in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, we just want to come before you and humble ourselves to say, Lord, I love you. I want us to take this time and we could just leap into his lap. Yeah, just leap into his lap like a baby and say, God, I surrender all to you. Begin to feel his hands begin to touch your head. And rub your stomach like a baby. And hear his voice say, I am with you, I am for you, and I am near you. For I am the Lord thy God, and there will be no other. Just begin to just begin to love on him. And begin to feel his arms wrapped around you. Light is a symbol of God's presence. Lighting candles during God's holy days and on Shabbat reminds us that God is our light. It is also written in Genesis that the offspring of a woman would crush the serpent's head. And I will put entity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Genesis 3, 15. It is, it is through a woman that our salvation would come, our hope, our light. It is by the seed of a woman that Yeshua was born. Let us kindle the festival lights. Now we will have the lighting of the candles. As we are lighting the candles, let's bless with the blessing of the candles. You see the blessings there? Let's read together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to kindle the Shabbat and festival lights. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and has preserved us and has enabled us to reach this season to celebrate this joyous occasion. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has performed miracles for our ancestors in those days, in this season, at this time. The Seder plate um, has many items that uh, we would use to experience the Passover uh, using our sins. We will now begin reading the Haggadah, which means the telling. We are called to celebrate Passover, Jew and Gentile. Turn to Matthew 5, 17 through 20. And I'll read it from the print because I have a King James and I think this is the Amplified. Verse 17, Matthew 5, 17 through verses 20. Amen. Amen. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter not the least stroke of a pen 
will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> this is in this passage is when Jesus uh, did the Sermon on the Mount and he was teaching them. And they were thinking that he was going to do away with the law, which is what you hear on many Christian televisions now. Many big name preachers are saying we're no longer under the law. We're under grace. We're not under the law as it pertains to righteousness, Paul says in Romans. But we do follow the law for, so that we can be prosperous. And if you need two out of mouth of two or three witnesses, Joshua 1 and 8 and Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, and observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. And it's, we know Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And what will happen? He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So Jesus was telling them the, the Old Testament is the law and the prophets. I'm not coming to do away with it. Jesus kept all of the feasts. That's why they asked, where will shall the master celebrate the Passover? Well, you don't have to say, what would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? He kept the feasts. So this is what this scripture is saying. And there are people that are teaching you that you don't have to keep it, that they're taking you back into bondage, where really... They're taking you off the path of, pros of the prosperous life. And I'll just give you the word the Lord told me. The law is a blueprint for prosperity and success. Our salvation comes through Jesus. That's our righteousness. Amen. Then the Lord says to Moses, Moses, now you will see what I would do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand he would let them go. Because of my mighty hand, he would drive them out of his country. Let's go to Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Let us read together when you have this. Ready? I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hold on, right there. With a what? With a what? See his arm stretching out right now. See it stretching out right now. And with mighty acts of judgment, with mighty acts of judgment, but keep reading. I will take you as my own people. Otherwise, I will take you as my own people. You are mine. Yes. You have been bought with a price. Yes. You are mine. And I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of Egypt. You ought to just scream right now and say, God, hallelujah. You ought to begin to say, no more dry place. No more sour drink. For the earth has opened up in newness increase. Amen. 
During the Passover um, Seder, we would drink four glasses of wine. Um, that's wine on everybody's table. And we do have designated drivers for everybody. <laughs> Grape juice. If you go to a synagogue, it's going to be wine. <laughs> um, the fruit of the vine is a symbol of joy in life. And each of the four cups reminds us of the first four, I will, in Exodus 6. They represent the cup of sanctification. I mean, you say the cup of sanctification. The cup of sanctification. Represents the cup of plagues. Let me hear you say the cup of plagues. Cup of plagues. Represents the cup of redemption. Let me hear you say the cup of redemption. Cup of redemption. It represents the cup of praise. Let me hear you say cup of, cup of praise. We will say the traditional prayer before drinking each cup. I would also like to point out that there is a traditional meaning with each cup. As well as y'all, um, Yeshua's fulfillment. Sanctification. We are to be clean of yeast. Through the Exodus out of Egypt, Adonai set the nation of Israel apart forever to be the holy people unto him by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the blood. <laughs> Fulfillment through Jesus. We are to be clean of sin. Yeshua is the only way to be cleansed of our sins through his shed blood. What's the only way to be cleansed? His shed blood. Amen. Amen. I read plagues. It says, in the Old Testament, we remember the plagues in Egypt. Fulfillment through Jesus Remember our trials and tribulations that develop perseverance, humility, and make maturity in our walk with the Lord. Amen. In the Old Testament, Marie, uh, redemption in the Old Testament symbolized the blood of the Passover lamb who saved the Israelite from death. Fulfillment through Jesus. Yeshua is our Passover lamb. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Whose blood saved us from death? Jesus. Whose blood? Jesus. Whose blood again? Jesus. Come on, lift your hand and say Jesus. Jesus. This cup is a cup we use in communion of the Lord's Supper. Come on, can we raise our hands? So we receive, we receive. Sanctification. sanctification. We receive, we receive. And, understand and understand the plagues of Egypt. The plagues of Egypt. We, thank the Lord we thank the Lord for redemption. For redemption. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we praise you. We thank you for those four cups. Turn to Hebrews 10. 26 through 29. It says in verse 26, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and a rage of fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him and who has insulted the spirit of grace. Come on, raise your hand.
Lord, we don't want to continue to insult you or trample on you, over you, as you being unholy. We don't want to keep on sinning. So we are crossing over to the path that you designed for us to walk. Thank you for the precious blood. The precious blood of Jesus. Let's turn to, let's turn to Luke 22, <coughs> verse 14, 18, and let's read together. Ready? Breathe. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.